gathering removal that might end up backfiring on you. Maybe you uh, will end up regretting doing with that uh, or uh, because you're going to get attacked. Okay, we're going to start off with Beast Within. Uh, a green to generic instant. Now, this blows up any permanent on the battlefield, but its controller creates a 3-3 green beast token. You spent three mana to basically maybe even upgrade my lonely artifact or enchantment into a 3-3 monster. And then I will make you regret that three damage uh, every single turn. It's going to add up in, what is it? You have 40 life in commander. In 12, 14 turns, you're dead. That's what it's, you'll, you'll get got by the beast within. All right, next up, let's take a look at Toads has Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp. Okay, the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library if it's a permanent card they put onto the battlefield. That could possibly be way worse than what was out there in the first place. It's actually very similar to um, Beast Within in that it is three mana, also at instant speed. Uh, the only difference is Beast Within, you're guaranteed to get a 3-3, what was it, like a 3-3 beast? Was it literally just a beast? Sometimes it's an elephant. Here, I mean, you anything could end up coming out of this thing. I don't want to say it could, it could also be a boat because I've overused that, but I mean, it could be, uh, it could be an Eldrazi. You dealt with the Sliver King, which doesn't exist, and then you got an Eldrazi. You never know. Oh, we have no music? Or oh, we're going to have music in a moment. Hold, hold on. It's the evening show. I'm discombobulated. There we go. Well, now, now that we've got our music, now we've got our tea, whatever you're drinking in this fine evening, now we can do our show. Uh, you guys are all mentioning Path to Exile. Why are you so big on Path to Exile? Path to Exile. This is sort of a sad example for this show. I mean, what is this? Okay, you get rid of the creature. You gave them a land. Are you dead yet? Probably you will. Te technically, tactically, you don't want to give someone a land. But probably one of the uh, sadder suggestions that we would see on this show. Uh, next up, let's look at... <laughs> If I said Swords to Plowshare, sorry, Path to Exile was said, Swords to Plowshare is going to be extra sad. Clarinet guy, give me something spicy here. Ashes to ashes. Okay, we got, it's a three mana sorcery. Exile two target non-artifact creatures, and you deal five, <laughs> it deals five damage to you. But here's the good side, we got rid of the non-artifact creatures. Can't deal with them artifacts, no machines around here. Wow, two and one. That's like spending one and a half mana and one and a half mana. You know, this is almost like dismember range. It's like two dismembers. They could just just re uh, rename it to two dismembers in one card. It's effectively what I'm paying, in including the life points in order to cast this thing to get rid of two cards at once. All right, next up, let's look at our first super chat of the day we got from John. Wave of vitriol. Ha has hit me on occasion, says John. The wave of indifference, the wave of vitriol. This is a seven mana sorcery. Now each player sacrifices all artifacts, enchantments, and non-basic lands they control. But for each land sacrificed this way, you may search your library for a basic land card, put onto the battlefield tap, then each player who searched their library this way shuffles it. Where's the downside, actually? Okay, so you sack each player sacks all artifacts and enchantments. I guess the deal is that you sack also your enchantments. This is completely symmetrical. I thought it'd be something like you search everyone searches their library for new artifacts and enchantments and put them onto the battlefield. That would that would be dangerous. That would be terrible. Uh, Abzo with snuff out when you play against mono <laughs> when you play against mono red. Snuff Out, it's a 4 mana instant. If you control a swamp, you may pay 4 life rather than pay Snuff Out's mana cost. Destroy a target non black creature. It can't be regenerated. I will tell you, I wouldn't even think twice. The moment, if I'm on the play, I play a swamp, I pass, they go turn 1 goblin guide, I'm just like, Enemy spotted. It, it's it's gone. I will spend the 4 life. I, the goblin guide's gonna be worth like 8 life somewhere down the line. Okay, next up we've got the super chat from Yeesus. 
for 2,500 something money. Drain life. If you say four and your opponent is at four life, but you could have dealt seven and then they swords to plowshares. <laughs> Drain life. You're referencing the uh, world championship. Or is it a pro tour? I can't remember if it was a pro tour. Drain life for a black one generic sorcery. Uh, this is, okay, this is, you're regretting on a completely different angle here. Pay X. Drain life e deals X damage to target creature or player. Spend only black mana in this way. Gain one life for each one damage dealt, but not more than the toughness of the creature or the life total of the player. Drain life damages. However, you can drain life for as much as you want to a particular player. Just not going to gain that much life. And in the finals, I think it was Pro Tour Chicago. We had uh, David, was it Levy's? can't remember his name. I made the video on this thing. And it was versus, versus Bob Maher Jr. Guy goes for a drain life for exactly his opponent's life total. Opponent in response, swords to plushes their own creature to gain enough life to get out of range of the drain life. And then the drain life player looked really sad. Especially since they could drain life for... <laughs> they could drain life for a ton. They would have won the thing on the spot. Okay, next up. Let's take a look at Chris's Feed the Swarm. Can very easily cost you an arm and a leg. No, it's gonna well, it's gonna cost like it's gonna cost you at least a leg. Black one generic sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment opponent controls. You hear that? Black has it. Destruction. Enchantment destruction in the room. You lose life equal to that permanence mana value. Oh god! Just a Please don't put omniscience on the battlefield. Just don't do it. Don't make me. I've got to feed the swarm and I've got nothing to target. Yeah, I think that's the most expensive thing, right? Someone puts omniscience on the battlefield and you get to live to tell the... T Usually if that happens, there's, you're not even going to have a turn. It's like, that's not even going to happen. But if it does, you got to take one for the team. You got to, you know, someone's got to deal with that omniscience. Somebody... That's somebody gonna be you. Okay, Erland has... Okay, I got, I got one. I got Rite of the Serpent. Rite of the Serpent is a six... Me Was this adjusted? I feel like this is not the real card. Rite of the Serpent, six mana, sorcery. Destroy target creature. If that creature had a plus one, plus one counter on it, put a one, one green snake creature token onto the battlefield. How is that snake gonna kill you? I mean, you might regret. You put it like a 1-1. One, one. This is actually a weird card. It's so expensive. You Sorcery speed, destroy a creature, and if it had a counter, put a 1-1 one, one green snake. Oh, you get the token. You get the token out of this. How are you gonna regret? This is all upside. I think this is all upside, no downside. Okay, we got Christopher B. Divergent Transformation. Transformations. We got a five, sorry, seven mana instant with Undaunted. This spell costs one less to cast for each opponent. So it could get a discount of three mana. Exile two target creatures. For each of those creatures, its controller reveals the cards from the top of their library. Until... Uh, they reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then the shuffle the rest into their library. Yeah, you thought that was the biggest creature in my deck? Well, <laughs> just wait and see what you flip over next. All right, next up, let's take a look at Toilet Ducks Dio Di Chan or Dio Can. Artful Beauty. Oh, that's actually the name of the card. Artful Beauty. Okay, we have a red 3 generic 1-1 one, one legend. On your turn, before you attack, you may tap Diochan to destroy any one creature. Then your opponent destroys any one creature of their choice. Oh my goodness. So first it was like... And then all of a sudden you give your opponent the option to... And then you both... It's an eye for an eye. It's an eye for an eye card. Yeah, you will regret. You have to make sure that you have, like, nothing in play except the stupid Dio-chan. More direct. Tibble's Trickery. Does anyone play this card? 
Camera target spell. Choose one, two, three at random. Uh, it's control that builds that many cards, then exiles cards on the top of their library until they exile a non-land card with a different name than that spell. They may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then they put the exiled cards on the bottom of their library in a random order. Now, it's technically not removal, but it does bring me back to when this card was first released. I thought it was trash. A lot of people thought it was trash. And it turned out to be like a huge combo card with Cascade decks. Uh, Cause you play like a Cascade card, use Tibble's Trick Treat to counter your own Cascade card. And then there's like nothing to hit. Like, uh, or you, oh yeah, then you had like this really high chance of hitting an Emrakul if Emrakul was the only thing in your deck. We got Je Perla, uh, Peralta with Descent of the Dragons. Those dragons be descending. It's a six mana sorcery. Destroy any number of creatures, but for each of the creatures destroyed this way, they get a four four red dragon. Creature token on with flying onto the battlefield. You blew everything up, but at what cost? So this is like an upgrade if you're like a token deck. I guess if you're like this gigantic token deck with like billions of goblins, you go descend to the dragons and then your tiny zero, your one ones or whatever, get upgraded into four fours. That's like one way of looking at this card. Otherwise it just gets turns to trash. Okay, Tibbo's Trickery, that's the only counter spell we have on this list. Counter spells don't count. We don't call, have you ever called a counter spell removal? Yeah, I remove it from the stack. Says probably some blue player somewhere. Erlen says, I blow my own goblins to make dragons. There you go, exactly. Uh, okay, next up, let's go with Beanpot's Divine Gambit. Red has all, sorry, this is not a red card. It sounds like a red card. The white, white sorcery. Exile target artifact creature enchantment opponent controls. Then that player may Put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. There are rules and then there are gods. Would you like to see one of them? I got one in my hand. Exile. Oh, wait a minute. You can target your own stuff. Oh, so no, you can't target. Okay. I was like, gotta read. I read the thing and then I was like, can you target your own stuff? And it just says an opponent controls. That would be just insanely broken if that was possible. <laughs> Jack Straw's like removed from the hand. Yeah, some people are like, I got removal for the hand. No, we're not counting any of that stuff. Uh, next up, is near death experience? Near death. I don't think this is removal at all. Dick. The beginning of your upkeep, you've got exactly one life. You uh, you win the game. Yeah, that's not removal. Period. Hey, Mikey J's here. Mikey J's in the house. Uh, we did do Chaos Warp. There we go. Old boy with the Slaughter Pact. Big Zo Regret. Has has anyone ever lost from Slaughter's Pact? I have know I know a few people who have uh, lost to me because they played sla Slaughter Pact. Sorry, Slaughter Pact. Uh, it is a zero mana instant. Destroy target non-black creature. At the beginning of your next upkeep, pay a black and two generic. If you don't, you lose the game. And the only reason they couldn't pay it is because uh, I took away all their black mana by their turn. Yep, they thought they were gonna play sl Slaughter Pack for nothing. Would World Fire count? Yeah, I would, I would count World Fire. That puts you in a very precarious spot and you blew up the world. World Fire for nine mana, sorcery, exile all permanents. And then also exile all cards from hands and graveyards. Then each player's life total becomes one and becomes a race. Who gets pinged for a singular damage first for total victory? Any pact when the opponent plays Twiddle on your land? Does that work? Doesn't Twiddle... No, no, no. The thing uh, triggers at your upkeep. Twiddle, you're talking about tapping the land, right? They can just tap in response to float the mana. Because the, the thing still triggers at the upkeep at the same time that you would... Uh... It has to be removal? Reading the title explains the title, as far as I'm con concerned. Monacala with Call for Blood. More blood for the Blood God. A black for generic instant as an additional cost to play. Uh, Call for the Blood. You must sacrifice a creature. Whoops, sorry, that's <laughs> wrong sound effect. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn where X is the sacrifice creature's power. Damn it! We have to throw away a larger creature 
in order to deal with large problems. It's like I mean, it's like throwing a giant ogre, then a giant dragon, then a giant Eldrazi to beat larger and larger creatures. This is really the goblin's way of dealing with things. Lasagna Destroyer says, any removal in your deck when Rogavon hits you? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. oh, you're talking about your own removal when the Rogavon smacks you and steals it. B. Jackstraw with Goblin Assassin. The Assassin, a 5 mad 2-2. Two, two. Uh, whenever Goblin Assassin or another Goblin comes into play, each player flips a coin. Oh my god. Uh, then each player... Anyway, each player whose coin comes up tail sacrifices a creature. Oh, that could happen to both people. Do we even count this as removal? Like, I guess, sort of. Whenever Goblin Assassin or another Goblin comes to play, each player whose coin comes up tails sacrifices a creature. Okay, so you play a Goblin, everyone's flipping coins, you lose the flip, you lose your creature. It's as simple as that. How many people are voting for Armageddon? I don't even feel like Armageddon is like in the spirit of the show. This is, a, I mean, I guess. Why'd you play it if it's gonna be bad for you? Wasn't that part of the plan? You blew up all the lands. You maniac. You blew it up. Damn you. Damn you all to hell. Okay, next up, let's look at uh, Tommy Sidden's Star of Extinction. Extinction. Seven mana, destroy target land. Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature in each planeswalker. And in like, uh, in one-on-one -on -one magic, that's Sapuku. That's absolute Sapuku. Oh no, oh no, sorry, oh, it's, it's two, oh, it's only to each creature in each planeswalker. I thought it was 20 damage to you as well. What a way to get a draw. If you could also deal 20 damage to the players as well. Yeah, you're gonna wipe out everything. You better make sure that uh, you wipe them out for a good reason. Okay, Abzo, when you generous gift, then die to the 3-3 three, three elephant. Exactly. It was a generous gift. Actually, how do we even consider this like a generous gift? The idea is that uh, the elephant squashed the thing that you destroyed. A white two generic instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token. The best presents are, impo are impossible to re-gift. Or re-wrap. Or return. There's no receipt on this elephant. Welcome, Steve Cooper. We did Chaos Warp, Tom, uh, uh, Tommy. Iris, the with catastrophe. Catastrophe is a six mana sorcery. Destroy all lands or all creatures. Creatures destroyed this way cannot be regenerated this turn. Just question, when you play Armageddon or like, uh, let's say, like, Wrath of God, are you really doing it in a situation where it would be disadvantage? Like, are you going to blow up your own creatures? I can only imagine these cards are only played when it's going to work out for you. There's something, like, much bigger on the other side that you have to deal with. You are willing to sacrifice everything, all your children in front of you in order to deal with it. Okay, next up. Okay, Dick, are you going to redeem yourself? Redeem yourself, Dick. Infernal Grasp. They have a shock at the wrong moment. It's a two mana destroy target creature and you lose two life. That's true. You get zapped. But you do get to destroy any two, any creature. Ooh, I like this one. Not Skywalker with the chain lightning. I have never seen like a lightning war out of this mostly because i don't play red i also don't play chain lightning uh so maybe curious to anybody who's played chain lightning how many chain lightning chains have there been what's the largest stack because for red it's a sorcery it deals three damage to any target could be creatures then that player or that permits controller may pay double red if the player does they may copy this spell and may choose new targets for that copy so they could zap something back at you but then you could zap something back at them. This, uh, in theory, could get out of control like crazy if en there's enough red mana on both sides. Uh, in practice, I've never seen it happen. It's usually just three damage to someone's face and then that's it. All right, next up, let's take a look at 
opening hand with uh, dismembers in it. You mean like if you're not a black deck, to target creature gets minus five, minus five, but you have to take like a huge chunk of damage. You gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, talk about chain, uh, chain lightning. We got the chain of vapors from Bryce the Hottie. Chain of, I'm not spelling this right. It's P O U. Oh, it's just chain of vapor. It's a blue instant. Return target non land permit to its owner's hand. Then that player's controller, they may sack a, they may sack a land. Everyone's got land to sacrifice. And if they do, you may copy the spell, and then you may choose a new target for the copy. All of a sudden, the vapor is chaining into some sort of uh, some sort of problem. It's a chain of vapor. Next up, let's look at uh, John's Arc of Blight. Remember, everyone, this whole show is completely unscripted, and it shows sometimes. Arc of Blight is a two-mana artifact. Pay three, tap. Sacrifice Arc of Blight. Destroy target land. It actually doesn't come at any cost to you, though. Like, what's the downside to this thing? You do just you do have removal. I mean, I will. Okay, you have it comes at the cost of your time. It was a card in your deck. Um, you probably spent your entire turn on this. Uh, it wasn't worth it. So do you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe there what? Maybe you will regret playing this removal. <laughs> Alley with uh, Deadly Tempest. Deadly Tempest is a four six mana sorcery. Destroy all creatures, and then each player loses life equal to the number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way. That could really hurt. It's a bit, it's like a like a safer wildfire in some ways. You'll have you'll like somewhat control how much life you lose, but I mean you could be a lower you, you could be in killing range over somebody else. Okay, we got. Uh, Christopher B with the Plague Boiler. You happy, Christopher B? We got we got a card for you. And it's a unique card. Three mana artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plague counter on plague boiler. Three mana, put a plague counter on plague boiler, or remove a plague counter from plague boiler. When plague boiler has three or more plague counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, destroy all non-land permanents. That is weird! You actually might accidentally blow up your entire board by accident. Yeah, this is wild. That's why if they got the claws, you can spend three mana to remove a plague counter on it. Then if the plagues are like too strong, well, kablooey. Uh, all right, we got a super chat coming in hot from uh, King Ginger, Baleful Mastery. Great card, if done, no, not done at all. Okay, it's a four mana instant. You can pay a black, black one generic rather than pay the spell's mana cost. If the black and one generic was paid, an opponent does draw a card. Okay, exile a target creature, planeswalker. That card could be your undoing. You know, you saw how I top decked that. Card. I have two. I have one card in my hand. I draw another card. I play land. I play gigantic bomb spell. Do you regret? No, you don't regret. You should have felt the regret. Okay, next up, let's take a look at... Who hasn't got a card yet? Yo, Little Ted with the Mana Clash. Okay, Red Sorcery. You and target opponent each flip a coin. Mana Clash deals one damage to each player whose coin comes up tails. Repeat this process until both players' coins come up heads or same flip. What? I don't even know what happened here. Okay, you and opponent each flip a coin. Okay, that part I have... Uh followed deals one damage each player whose coin comes up tails all right there's a 50 50 chance but you have to repeat the process until both players co coins come up heads on the same flip so that is the odds of that are like one in four yeah it's one in four so that means you're we're gonna on average take at least three damage on average interesting but it could go on for forever <laughs> It could go on forever, and then and then all of a sudden uh, we take too much damage. Yeast is a whole huge fan of rolling dice and flipping coins. Tails, you ouch! Heads, nothing. And you have to keep repeating the process. Oh, it's also possible one person keeps flipping tails, and the other person keeps flipping heads. 
And at that point, I'd be I'd be really concerned about the uh, legitimacy of that coin. David with the dead ringers. The regret comes when you realize you misread the card, made a, made a legal play, but nothing died. <laughs> this card is uh, to sorcery. Destroy two target non-black creatures unless either of one is a color the other isn't. They can't be regenerated. Doesn't technically count. Vitor, Oblation. Is that a real card? Or are you talking about Obliterate? Okay, this is a real card. It doesn't sound like a real word. Hold on, I got Oblation Dictionary. What is going on here? What does Oblation even mean? The act of making a religious offering. The act of offering the you you. Eucharistic elements to God. Something offered in worship or devotion. All right, we're making a sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice something here. Okay, uh, it's three mana instant. The owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library and they, and they draw two cards. Not one, you get two. It's two for Tuesday here. You lose one creature, you get two cards back. We also learned the word of the day. Honestly, there's a lot of words on magic cards. I have no idea what they mean. That's probably why I don't even remember the names to magic cards so well. Not the Zilla with Caravex Spite. On the good on the good side, like we're learning about a lot of cards that can deal with anything. Uh, black, 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 instant. Sacrifice all permanents. Discard your hand. Target player loses five life. I threw it all away, but at what cost? The end justifies the means. What do I care if I rule over the dead rather than over the living? The dead ask fewer questions. This is like the last burn spell you you, you play. Anyway, it's not even a removal spell. Disqualified. Okay, next up. J with Vraska's Betrayal. Vraska's Betrayal. The minus two have used it on me and ramped me into a critical spell. Okay, so uh, six mana. The minus two is target creature becomes a treasure artifact with tap, add this artifact. Sack this artifact, add one mana of any color and lose all card types. So basically, yes, your creature becomes a treasure, but that treasure is ramp. You'll turn that junk into a new, stronger, more deadlier creature. Okay, next up, we have we have a super chat from Alpha Nerd actually, uh, and that is Rankle's prank. Four mana sorcery. Choose one or more. Each player discards two pl cards. Uh, each player loses four life, or each player sacrifices two creatures. This card looks insane. This looks so good in. Um, Oh, I guess it's not a very good control card because you have to each player discards two cards. How the hell do you abuse this thing? But I guess that's why it's on the show because it's probably going to sting you nearly as bad as it stings them. Okay, Pedgeman with the Transmorgify. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking up? Trans Transmo. Why can't I find this card? There we go. Uh, it's rarely used as removal. I know, I understand. Okay, it's a four mana sorcery. Exile target creature. Uh, usually your own. Because that creature's controller reveals cards on the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. That player puts that card onto the battlefield and shuffles the rest into their library. It reminds me a lot of... Uh, I guess I'm not even going to let you guys have it. Uh, what is it? Creativity? Indomitable creativity? Very similar. This has been used against me like removal before. Uh, more than once. It, it's like a triple red X. Destroy X artifacts and or creatures. And then for each permit destroyed this way, its controller reveals cards on the top of their library until they reveal uh, an artifact per creature card. So like this deck in a pinch, like I had no other way of comboing off. So they decided to just destroy my big creatures and play and hope that I just turned over a bunch of junk. Absolute glorious junk. Uh, I won anyway. Okay, you heard the music. That means it's time to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. 
Deal of the week this week, you gotta check every single week there's a new deal of the week because this time it is 15% off all secret lair singles and sealed product. I personally, huge fan of the offer you can't refuse, Kitty Jace, very adorable, but maybe you want the promo uh, Elish Norn or Zank Paladin Unbroken, who are you? But you can get them 15% off at FusionGamingOnline.com. And don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get not only an additional 5% off your, all your purchases, uh, it also helps me. It supports the channel. So I have uh, a lot of self-interest in uh, supporting and uh, giving you my coupon code. Next up, we got our, we got to thank our other sponsor, Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Uh, play any format, any time that you want. You can play Commander. You can play Pioneer, Standard. You tired of spending a lot of money on MTG Arena playing Standard? Well, now you can play any deck in Standard when you're ranting with Mana Traders. Oh, the cards have cycled out because of rotation? Your cards didn't rotate. It was Mana Traders cards. You can support the channel with my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E. They don't have a, uh, alchemy on Arena, though. That's one thing that they do not have. They'll have standard, though. Okay, next up... King Ginger's Reality Shift! Fun Chaos Spell. Oh, in blue! Blue one generic instant, exile target creature, and its controller manifests the top card of their library. That player puts the top card of their library onto the battlefield to face down as a 2-2 creature. You might even die to that grizzly bear. But if it's a creature card, it can be turned up face time anytime for its mana cost. Alright, next up. Uh... Dick, didn't you get a card already? Ha Wrath of God, I need to get home earlier than that to win. There you go, there's Wrath. Oh, they got a new... They got a new art for Wrath of God. I didn't know they have a new art. The Death of a Bachelor. Pact of Negation. Pact of Negation, not technically removal. You're, you're close, though. So close. Abzo with Pongify. Then suddenly the 3-3 three, three Monk is a th I know, exactly. I have died playing Pongify and Rapid Hybridization so many times. It's a blue instant. Destroy target creature. But instead, they've got a 3-3 three, three Green Ape creature token. You pungify them. You transform them from human to dirty ape. Spectral Manic, how about the OG Transmorgify? The Polymorph. Oh man. I sort of there was I played this awesome polymorph deck back in 2010, but I was too stupid to play this deck. I sort of wish I could go back in time 14 years and like play the deck again. It's like 2009, 2010, something like that. It's a four mana sorcery, destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated, and its controller reveals cards on the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Uh, the player puts that card onto the battlefield and shuffles all their cards revealed this way into uh, this way into their library, into the library. But uh, yeah, you could use this as a, a weird removal spell, but usually you put it, you destroy a token and you put out like a gigantic Eldrazi creature. Uh, as a result of this. Such a cool deck. I was too stupid, though, to play that deck. It played Jace the Mind Sculptor, and I didn't understand at the time that you want to brainstorm first, put bad cards on top, then fetch. I did it the other way around. I was fetching first to thin the deck so I could dig deeper to the good cards. Yeah, whatever. We live and learn. I can't play that deck again, though. It's completely rotated out of existence. Uh, let's see. Someone to foresee with the Mog Assassin. Oops, I spelled Assassin wrong. Okay. It is a 3-mana 2-1 Goblin. Also flip a coin off of this thing. Uh, if you win the flip, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Otherwise, destroy target creature of that opponent's choice. Oh, God. Uh, no, God, please, no. That could backfire horribly. And they could blow up anything. They could go, even go after the Mog Assassin. You really are gambling here. Heads you win. Tails, uh, you wish it was heads. Okay, next stop, let's take a look at Starfire Dragon's Apocalypse. Uh, 
Five mana, remove all permanents from the game. Discard your hand. <laughs> yeah, you don't have any hand anymore. Everyone else got to keep their hand. You're the only one who lost out uh, over here. I meant reality scramble, but it still worked. It was still a good suggestion. You accidentally, you accidentally super chatted a completely legal card. Okay, we have a four mana sorcery. Put target permit you own on the bottom of your library. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card. Hold on, is this even removal? Remove cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card that shares a card type with that permanent. Put that card onto the battlefield uh, and the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. It's got retrace. Literally can't be used as removal. Impossible. So your first one was legal. The second one was actually bogus. Okay, who are we going to donate the super chat to? Anyone don't got a card yet? Can't tell if Toilet Duck... I can't tell who has got a card. Okay, we'll give Old Boy one. Last one standing. We got three mana sorcery. Choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. Oh, no! Oh, no! It might not even be your creature. So, how are you supposed to use this card? If someone has more stuff than you... Oh, okay, I guess it works if you have more things than anyone else, and then some they have very few creatures, but they're super powerful, and you have to blow them up. Yeah, chaos. Yeah, basically, chaos truly ensues. We said Armageddon. We said Armageddon already. Is this a Hearthstone card? The last one standing. Some train all their lives for a shot at a at the title. Some just get really, really lucky. Do you know what? Hearthstone stole so much stuff from uh, Magic: The Gathering that I think they, you know they could steal some back. Serpentine. How about Apocalypse Chime? Because if you're playing this, you're probably the only one with homelands in your deck. Does not sound like a very exciting card. Nadzer with slip out the back. Oh, yeah, you buff them up. Oh, yeah, it's an instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It phases out. So you temporarily can deal with, like, a blocker. Um, but if you don't if you don't make good use of it, you just, like, basically upgraded them for nothing. Absolutely nothing. What about oddly uneven? Let's take a look. This is not even a real card. Five mana sorcery, destroy each creature with an odd number of words in its name. We have, I am done reading that card. Alpha Nerd with the Soul Spike. Soul Spike is... Someone is puking up blue blood around here. I think there are greater concerns about the, than the Soul Spike. Okay, seven mana instant. You may remove two black cards in your hand from the game rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Deals four damage to target creature or player, and you gain four life. So what, what, like, the downside is you might regret spending three cards to deal a whole four damage to one creature? I guess I can sort of get behind that. I might regret it too. What did I even put this card in my deck for? I just obliterated my hand to deal four damage to something. Lightning Helix could do a little bit more than that. Alley with United Undoing. Unite, United Undoing. I don't know this card. United something? Is it? No, I don't think it's this, right? Uh, something Undoing? Maybe right of undoing? Return target non land perm you control. You're like, oh, never mind. All right, well, I don't know either. Red shift ish. Slaughter pack. Oh, we looked at slaughter pact. Excellent, excellent card. Excellent choice. Uh, Erland, bit weak. That's probably not a card. David Own, demonic pact. Demonic pact. Part one removal, part four ultimate regret. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, uh, four mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you choose one. You can't even choose one immediately. Uh, deals four damage to our creature or player, and you gain four life. Target opponent discards two cards. You could also draw two cards. But at some point, you're going to have to lose the game. Oh, glory. Greatness at any cost. Yeah, part four, a harmless offering. No, 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 no. Part three, ha harmless offering. Part four is too late. You dead at that point. Okay, next, let's look at bean pots or a fracture. So three mana enchantment, sack a land, destroy target enchantment. Lands for your enchantments. What an excellent deal. Okay, we got uh, Steve Cooper with a huge super chat. Bone splinter, bone splinters, and two donations. It was rough using this card starting out having little options for removal. Really? Like, what was your what was your MTG starter pack? Some, like, someone's random... Oh, did you start playing around... Where was this? Oh, this is Dominary United. This is an old card. It's like... I think this is way older. Where is this? What is the origin story to this? So, yeah, Shards of Alara. Black Sorcerer is an additional cost to play. Bone Splinter. Sacrifice a creature. Destroy to our creature. If this is the only card... That you had available in your card pool to destroy creatures, I feel very sorry for you. That was rough. Uh, ooh, this is a good one. Hyena's Bantu's Last Reckoning. It's not actually true. You could, uh, Bantu can reckon many times uh, in a single game. So three mana sorcery that destroys all creatures, but lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. You basically stasis yourself. In a weird way. Hunter, we did Pongify. As says, hidden flavor text of making everyone at the table do their best to protect the monkey. Really? Everyone got to protect the monk? Okay, we got Henlo, Henlo. Okay, so the first super chat goes to... Uh, no, the first super chat just went to Bonchu's Last Reckoning. Second one goes to Henlo, Henlo, Shattering Pulse. Which is a two-mana instant with buyback three. Destroy target artifacts. I don't think there's any downside to this. You could choose not to play the buyback. These have downside, like big downside. You're going to regret. I don't know if you pay the three mana. If you pay that extra buyback, it's up to you. Do countering spells count? No. And what does knowledge pool have it have anything? Oh, knowledge pool. That that weird card. Uh, okay, next. Let, we still got to give that super chat. Anyone do Navinral's deck? No one did Navinral's disc. Navinral's disc. I think it's with a Y. Nope, I'm wrong. Nevin. Okay, there's Navinral's disc. Four mana. Uh, enters the artifact. Enters the battlefield. Taps. Pay one. Tap. Destroy target. All artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. You know what you might regret is that you couldn't destroy everything on the battlefield. You couldn't get rid of people's uh, planeswalkers. They didn't know it. Navinral didn't know what a planeswalker was back then. And so had, he had no chance of actually destroying him, destroying one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know this was the theme. I just joined. Um, you might regret playing this MTG removal. What was your thing? Oh, your thing was, oh, Shattering Pulse. <laughs> Wait, you know this one from personal experience. Do you regret playing the Shattering Pulse in your deck? That could make some sense. Okay, we got uh, King Ginger's World Slayer. World Slayer is a 5-mana equipment artifact, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player that's equipped with this, destroy all permanents other than World Slayer. Oh, yeah, you could end up blowing up all your stuff as well. So you're not, uh... Yeah, you, you will destroy all of their stuff, but also at the cost of all of your stuff. Sacrifices must be made. Greatness at any cost. Even though I have to blow up, uh... You and your friends. And family. Toilet Duck. Crooked Scales. Ah, oh, they cheating people, are they? Four mana artifact. Pay for tap. Choose target creature you control and target creature an opponent controls. We're flipping more coins. If you win the flip, destroy the creature the opponent controls. If you lose the flip, destroy the creature you control unless you pay three and re-flip the coin. You better have a lot of... You're going to have any more mana? 
You spent four to activate this thing. You're gonna pay another three to flip the coin. No, I want another one. Double or nothing. Double or nothing, I'm telling you. Let's do it again. Until you run out of mana. Captain Reese, Rhythm of the Wild, press Progenitus plus the guard as host of heroes, remove that combo. Sorry, we don't it's not bad combos that actually work day. Oh, here's simple something simple and effective. Oh, where did I saw? I saw a char around here. I know what char does. Houston. We have a problem. Damn it! The word char is everywhere. Okay, here I found char. Three mana instant. Deals four damage to target creature or player. Uh, which is the good side. Downside it deals, still deals two damage to you. Let's make sure that you have them dead faster than they have you dead. Okay, next super chat we got from Elfinerd. Thank you very much. Uh, the the Horus Heresy? Heresy? Simple of Heresy. This is a new card. Oh, it is a Warhammer card. Six mana, chapter one for each opponent. Gain control of up to one target non legend lot non legendary creature that player controls for as long as the ho the Horus Heresy remains on the battlefield. What the hell is this thing? Uh, chapter 2, draw a card for each creature you control but don't own. But then chapter 3, starting with you, each player chooses a creature. Destroy each creature chosen this way. What's the downside here? Okay, so for each opponent we gain a creature. They control. It's got to be non-legendary for as long as this thing's on the battlefield. But then starting with you, each player chooses a creature. Destroy each creature chosen this way. So I can choose a creature that I stole? Oh yeah, yeah, I see. You could regret because someone who is pissed off that you stole their stuff, they'll be like, okay, we're gonna blow up all your stuff. All three of them are gonna be incredibly angry. They will all have their sights on you. You steal their stuff, you better finish the job. Yeah, everyone can choose your creatures. Oh my goodness. What have I done? <laughs> Does color hoser aspect count as a downside? It can. So long as uh, if the downside is significant enough. Okay, now, uh, isn't saw in half like a fake card? I saw the saw in half somewhere. We just did crooked scales. Nikachu doesn't know anything about nerd stuff outside of MTG. That might not be true. I'm a, I will have you know I am a chess master. If you consider that a nerdy game. I can recite like 20 moves as the Sicilian Nidorf defense. Then I'm willing to share it with you and everything. Behold my nerdy brain. Okay, moving on. Uh, Pedgeman, remember when people played Assassin's Trophy? And then suddenly they didn't? Well, because better removal came up. Okay, hold on, where is... Oh, there's too many assassin cards. Assassin's Trophy. Uh, play it on curve and you ramp your opponent tremendously. Play it later and you better have alternatives. It's not... That, it's like really good if it's the last removal played. It's a two mana instant. Destroy target permanent opponent controls, but they can search their library for a basic land card and put it, put it onto the battlefield. Untapped! Um... Another thing is, like, black-green is just, like, dead. No one plays black-green. Or at least not, like, in a non-combo form. If you're a chess master, what's your FIDE rating? I will have you know I am a national master, which go does not have to follow the FIDE rating, but I will tell you I have a 2053 FIDE rating, something around there. My Canadian rating is over 2,200, though. Did anyone say Wrath of God? Yep. Wrath of God was taken. Royal Assassin? Why? There's no downside to Royal Assassin. <laughs> if I'm a chess player who moves diagonally, you mean like the, uh, talking about like the bishops? Saw in half. Legal. Was it legal? Saw in half. Three mana instant. Destroy target creature. But if the creature dies this way, its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature. Except their base power is half that creature's power, and their base toughness is half that creature's toughness. Round up each time. 
So you didn't you honestly didn't even deal with the creature. You just have to deal with the two smaller parts. It's like when I rip up a worm in the uh, in the backyard when I was a kid, and all of a sudden now there are two worms. It's just smaller, far less menacing, but it's still there. Okay, Black Lance Geo with uh, Essence Vortex. This is an old card. We got a three mana instant to bury a creature. That creature's controller may counter the spell by paying this creature's toughness in life. Huh? By, oh, okay, so you paying the life. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. This is a very sad removal spell, I have to admit. I don't think this is gonna do what you want it to do. Unless the card is like that big, or the creature's that big. Okay, Dick, do you have a real card here? So far, a lot of your cards are like uh, duds. Okay, we got a white one generic instant. Destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two map tokens. So far, this card has been like a really good card. Like some players don't even have creatures to use those map tokens. I use the map tokens. I have creatures though. I'm a creature person. I like to get in that red zone. Okay, everyone's looking at some, the last card, this one. It's not a bad looking card, I have to say, it's not a bad looking card. Although it must be very cold outside. But I do see, occasionally see those like videos of those Russians that go swimming in like the Arctic, frozen Arctic water. That's a card I haven't heard in a long time. Jackal Hops! Jackal Hops. Let's stop having fun. Let's just stop playing Magic. Six mana. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands, and they cannot be regenerated. Uh, Hunter with final payment. Two mana instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you have to pay five life. Or you have to sacrifice a creature to destroy target creature. Wow, the cost is so high. And the payoff is so little. Or you have the option to pay with five life. There's like so many cards that are just one black. Sack a creature, just destroy a creature. And this one costs two whole mana. And basically is the same damn thing. Chess tournament stream when? Uh, I did it. I did a few times actually. I did it on chess.com. I played entitled Tuesday. And even, and chess.com sent me a notification that if I want to play entitled Tuesday and stream it, I had to have everyone in emote mode. But anyway, it was like, it was just too difficult for me to uh, play while streaming. It's just way too hard the way I play chess. Spectral Maniac, Wicked Pact. Also, nobody watches me play chess. I had like 14 people. I shouldn't say nobody, so somebody showed up. Great rate, but you get smacked. Okay, it's three mana. You get to destroy two target non-black creatures, but of course you hit yourself in the face for five damage. We do what we got to do around here. So on half is infinite with dual caster mage. Oh God, that is true. Spartan speed runs. The title of this video is funny because I was just playing a game with a snowflake and he threatened literal violence against me because I turned his lands into creatures in response to a board wipe. That might happen. People don't like their creatures dying. You played Wrath of God? What are you against creatures? Uh, okay, next up, let's take a look at some winter for one, two, four C's. Infernal Harvest. Infernal Harvest. It's a black. <laughs> you had to have. I guess you needed a rule zero around board wipes. Do you have any board wipes? I can't. Ima I can't imagine. Are there rule zeros that say you can't have board wipes? That seems a bit extreme to me. It's literally like a fundamental card type. Infernal Harvest, two mana sorcery. Return X swamps you control to owner's hand. Infernal Harvest deals X damage divided any way you choose among any number of target creatures. Um. Oh, you have to return the swamps you control to your hand. That is absolutely disgusting. This is like one of the saddest cards. I guess it might be fine for like landfall maybe? I don't know. Landfall synergy? Huh? Maybe? Sort of? 
If you know what I mean? Toad's demonic consultation. In what way? Like what, you may not get the card you name? Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, you might not, actually. How many people die in uh, Commander because they, like, they name something and they reveal in the top six cards? Demonic Consultation, Black Instant, name a card. You remove the top six cards of your library from the game. Then you keep revealing cards in the top of your library until you reveal the name card. Put that card in your hand and remove the other cards revealed this way from the game. Uh, in one-on-one -on -one magic, you get access to four copies of each card. So the odds you Demonic Consultation away, like, all four copies... Or three out of three out of the four copies that are left in the deck, not really good. But like in Commander, maybe also the odds are not very good. But if it's in the top six, I mean your your library is completely wiped out. Oh, is this removal? Oh, it's not removal though. I was excited though. I like the I like the idea of losing the game with demonic consultation. We'll move on to Muddleweights, Aladdin's Ring. There's, like, no downside to this. I mean, your only regret is why you even put this in your, like, uh, why did you even put this thing in your deck? Why did I spend 16, da 16 mana for 4 damage? But it's actually, uh, barely, it's like, removal with no downside. No obvious downside. Uh, I don't think the Meat Hook Massacre has much downside, to be honest. Okay, next. Any, anyone who did not get a card. Maybe Vitor didn't get a card. Smallpox. Black, black sorcery. Each player loses one life, discards a card, sacks a creature, then sacrifices a land. Why, thank you very much. I am one life closer to doing you in. Uh, next up. <laughs> Using Aladdin's ring as a power move. <laughs> Imagine you are up against Aladdin's ring and commander. Imagine you tinker into this thing. Actually, it doesn't even... You can't even cheat this in play because you still have to activate it later. Oh, what a funny card. I don't remember what this is. Isn't this a land? Wrath's Edge. I thought this is a land. Yeah, it is a land. Tap to add one colorless man to your mana pool. Pay for tap, sack a land to deal a singular damage to a creature or player. Man, what I would do to get a Wrath's Edge to Wrath's Edge a Ragavan anytime right now. You can sacrifice any land. But you do have to sacrifice a land. What's the economics here? One land for one damage. Doesn't sound good. The Fox Clouds with Proteus Staff. Proteus Staff, a three mana artifact, pay three tap. Put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library. That creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until he or she reveals a creature card. Then that player puts that card into play and the rest on the bottom of their library in any order. This is a weird... This is... Isn't this just a constant polymorph? What makes this better than polymorph? Put target... Or did polymorph also look for artifacts? I don't think it did, though. I think it was just creatures. Destroy target creature... Yeah, you just look for a creature card. So what's the difference? Put a creature on the bottom of its own library. Or is that not, or it, like, I just never heard of this card before, but it looks like it does very similar things to Polymorph. You keep the control reveals cards on the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Looks like it works. Basically cost six, maybe that's the downside. Yeah, maybe in practice is like, ah, oh, this is a bit clunky. This is a bit of a clunker, whereas like you could put a creature in play by turn three and then like blow it up turn four. That's the uh that's the genius of the whole thing. Um Who else? Oh we got Cora uh Coronate with Form of the Dragon. Isn't this just a very expensive card? It is 7 mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Whoops, we're not done. Sorry about that. 7 mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Form of the Dragon deals 5 damage to target creature or player. At the end of each turn, your life total becomes 5. That's right. And creatures without flying can't attack you. You can't attack me unless you got flying. You have to be a dragon to come after me. 
But at the end of every single turn, your life total becomes five. Strike and strike of like lightning bolt range. All right, super chat time. Urtai resurrected. It's funny you say this, because I, I play Tesla this card quite a bit. It wasn't stri as good as I thought it was going to be. It's a 4 mana 3 2 creature with flash, and when it airs the battlefield, you, you can choose up to one. Uh, Karen target spell activated ability or triggered ability, its controller draws a card. Or you can destroy another target creature, Planeswalker, its controller draws a card. Usually the card is going to threaten you again. Yeah, it's like pretty decent. Get your card, bl get your cre creature blown up, like ca cash it in. It's not that bad. Okay, next up we also have Alpha Nerd with Orcus Prince of Undeath. The Orcus. This is some sort of weird X. It's four mana and X creature. Five three demon. Flying trample. And as a battlefield, choose one. Each creature, sorry, each other creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. So you might wipe out your creatures and you lose X life at the same time. Also, return up to X target creature cards with total mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. They gain haste until end of turn. Why would you choose the first one? I would just choose the other one. Just to go reanimate all day, baby. Reanimate all day. We did World Fire. Take one, one more free one from the crowd. Um, I think everyone got a card so far. Spartan says, regarding chess, I'm actually a chess player rated 1800. Would totally watch you play. I would watch me play too. It's just not in the cards. Everyone watches me for merfolk and coffee shows and stuff. Beanpot. Metamor Metamorphos? Huh? Metamorph. Oops. Meta. Never heard of this card. Metamorph. Oh, Metamorphosis. It's a green sorcery. Sacrifice a creature to add an amount of mana uh, equal to the casting cost plus one to your mana pool. It's not even removal. Okay, we can't end on that one. We gotta end on Homer. Homer's Leech's Tomb. The Leech? The actual leech? There's a blue one? Oh, they're really actually... Oh, I thought... Okay, there actually is a card. Maybe we can end... Okay, we'll end... We'll look at uh, Metamorphos and then Leech's Tomb. We're gonna... No, we're not gonna forget about you, Homer. We are not gonna forget about you. Okay, this is a two-mana instant. Put target permanent and opponent controls on top of its owner's library. That works. But that opponent... May put an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land card from their hand. Oh my god, it's a show and tell! That will be your greatest mistake. This thing costs $2. And opponent controls? Is this like some way of like politicking with like your opponents? Like, okay, you got something big in play? Because I got something might help you here. Alright, if you get my drift. I can help you get that thing in play. If you, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Is it Lich? Not Leech? It's Lich? Whatever. Okay, uh, what was it? Lich's Tomb. Okay, this is a four mana artifact. You don't lose the game for having zero less life, but whenever you do, whenever you lose life, sacrifice is permanent for each one life lost. <clears throat> Literally not even removal. Okay, we'll give it to, um, Muddle Weight! Demonic Hordes. So many disqualifications today. Six mana for a 5-5. Five five. Destroy target land. To be of your upkeep unless you pay triple black. Tap Demonic Hordes and sacrifice the land uh, of an opponent's choice. So you have to pay three perpetually. You're taxed by three mana for forever to have this 5-5 five five damn thing. And with that, good enough. it's good enough for me. Good enough for me. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for showing up today. We usually do this 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, Thursday this week, it will be at 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to MagicCon Philadelphia this weekend. I'm going to have a weekend of modern. Really looking forward to it. If anyone's going to be there, 
come by and say hi. I'd love to love to say hi to all my fans. Uh, and also, there will be no show on Friday. Nothing. Nada. Zip. And then we'll have a very late 8 p.m. show on Monday. On, uh, what was that? March something. On March 11th. There will be a late show on Monday. 8, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh... We gotta thank everyone who supports the show. Thank you very much, everyone who is a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show, or you super chat to help other people be part of the show. I really appreciate it. Now, of course, we gotta thank everyone who shows up here uh, at night this time around. We got Homer, Pedgeman, Brandon, Christopher B, Steve Cooper. We got Toad, Starfire Dragon, King Ginger, old boy, Christopher B, of course, Ali, Rest in Serpentine, Erland. Uh, Spectral Maniac, Abzo, JF, Iris, we got, did we do Toads? I think we did Toads, we definitely didn't do Hyena though. Did we do Pedgeman? Well, if we did Pedgeman, we did Pedgeman twice. Because you guys are the crew, so as usual, my coffee crew, keep bringing up them coffees. Or hot cocos, whatever you drink in the evening. And we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you at the next cup.